Welcome to the Bearcat Coaches Show. I'm Turner Kirby. Last week, baseball went 4-0 at Dolney Stadium. The Bearcats defeated Francis Marion in a midweek matchup and then followed that up with a sweep of nationally ranked Young Harris this past weekend. We talked to Coach Burke about his team's performance and how the team's preparing to wrap up the regular season. We're here with head baseball coach Jason Burke. A season sweep of Young Harris came in as number 11 team in the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association, number 17 in Collegiate Baseball Magazine. What was the message to your guys coming into the series, knowing that you're going against a team that could not only pitch very well, but also had a very dynamic offense as well? Yeah, I mean, the, the message to the guys all week was, you know, we're going to play to our strengths and we're going to try to take advantage of some of their weaknesses. Um, you know, we felt like looking at them statistically that, you know, we could hopefully make their infield make some errors with putting a lot of balls in play. We felt like some wild pitches, pass balls would come into play just looking at their stats. Um, you know, other than that, there, there weren't a lot of holes in their stats. I mean, you're talking about leading the, leading the league and um, stolen bases, leading the league and batting average, leading the league and HPPs. Um, you know, pitching-wise, their Friday guy was undefeated coming into the year. Um, so we knew we'd have to kind of grind it out on him. Um, and, and really, we honestly, you know, we tried to take away the uh, stolen base from him um, just by pitching guys that are really quick to the plate, that do a good job holding runners. Um, and, and I don't think they got a stolen base all weekend um, on us, which was huge. Um, you know, they're, they're a great team. Uh, they're a great team. Um, there's a reason why they're ranked number 11. There's a reason why they came into the weekend number one and, you know, still have a shot to win win the league. Um, very well coached. Um, you know, a lot of power throughout the lineup, a lot of speed. Um, and, and they've got some really good arms. You know, our guys just played a very good weekend. And uh, we played well versus Francis Marion on, on Tuesday as well. And, um, you know, hopefully we're getting hot at the right time. And, you know, some guys are starting to click. And, um, you know, man, we pitched the crap out of it this weekend. Uh, I told our guys if we held them to five or less every single game we'd sweep, uh, we went five, five, and four and got three wins. Going 4-0 and at home during a week isn't exactly a very easy feat, especially when you have young Harris. You have a, a strong Francis Marion squad who is putting up 20 wins now in Conference Carolina. Wow. You kind of touched on a little bit. A pitching staff this week was just spot on. The starters did their job, and then the bullpen came in and just shut things down, if you don't mind just kind of talking about a couple guys. Obviously, game three, Zach Pellegrino with a three-inning save just shut down any chance of a comeback for young Harris, Tyler Overholt as well. I mean, the pitching staff has just looked amazing the last last uh, week or so. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've added some pieces back from, from injury, and, you know, Alex Moore's done a phenomenal job of just continuing to preach to the guys, you know, let's let's get our best stuff on the plate. Let's make people hit us. Um, you know, Bennett Nance and Pelly did a fantastic job of that today, of just putting their stuff on the plate and making them hit us, you know, not giving them hardly anything for free. Um, you know, and shoot, man, yesterday, I mean, we went, you know, redshirt freshman, sophomore redshirt freshman um, for the entire game. Um, and all three of those guys have really, really good stuff. Um, and now they're they're learning how to pitch. Um, you know, they're getting outings under their belt and really learning how to pitch. And then, you know, man, Nick Foray, the last three starts has been phenomenal. Um, you know, he didn't start the year the way that he wanted to, um, was battling through some things. Um, and now now he's getting healthier as the year goes on and throwing the baseball better and better. And, um, you know, man, what, what a great time for the pitching staff to be clicking like they are. We've talked about him a couple times throughout the last couple of weeks, but Lucas Martino, perhaps probably his, his best overall performance on a – just the entire week, he hit about, I think, north of 400, if not north of 450. The power was there. You saw the speed. Obviously, in Game 3, he had the triple, but he also had a home run, a double. Uh, it just, what's it mean seeing him go through what he's gone through this year and kind of his arc up until now? Yeah, it's been it's been really cool to watch. I mean, you know, he he sat there earlier in the earlier in the year, you know, just being a really good teammate and. You know, our guys, you know, had his back um, is the best way to say it. And, um, you know, man, he's on fire right now. And, you know, what a great thing to have him hitting behind Connor Droz. You know, you give the PBC freshman of the year from last year some protection like that where they're like, man, I can't pitch around him because then I've got to pitch to Martino. Um, you know, that that's how a really good lineup's constructed. And, um, you know, you and I joked right before we turned the camera on, um, you know, our lineup right now goes sophomore, freshman, sophomore, freshman. Um, you know, so it's 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 a very good four that's very young that hopefully with more and more ABs can keep getting better and better and we can keep getting deeper and deeper in the lineup. You talk about Connor Droz, and he's walked seven times. I think he got hit by a pitch, but what's the message to him as a coach, as a staff, you know, knowing someone who 
has the power that can consistently barrel up balls if they're left over the plate. But what's the message to him, you know, keep him focused, keep him engaged, knowing that teams aren't exactly going to pitch to him, even when there's someone like Lucas Martino behind him, the fact that he, he's able to draw out those, those free bases and, you know, give guys behind him chances to produce runs with him being involved. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been preaching it all year, you know, just, just pass the bat to the next guy. And, um, again, it's easy to say that. It's not easy to do that. Um, you know, I think early in the fall, um, you know, Droz was, was pressing a little bit, thinking, you know, hey, I've got to go from being the PBC freshman of the year to being an All-American. And, um, you know, we just brought him in the office and, you know, told him, hey, man, like, you don't you don't have to do it all by yourself. You, you don't have to carry the team. And we got lots of good players that, that can hit behind you. And, you know, man, you know, Martino and Manriguez and Wilder this weekend were the three behind him. And, you know, when he takes his walks, he trusts those guys. Um, you know, and shoot, we had an alumni come by practice um, Thursday, and he, he gave the same message. He was like, man, we were so good here because, you know, we trusted our brothers behind us. Um, you know, it didn't matter if, if his name's Connor Lewis, but it didn't matter if I hit the home run or somebody else did. You know, we trusted the next guy. And, um, you know, again, that's been our motto all year is just pass the bat to the next guy. You talk about the guys behind Droz, behind Martino, and one of them, Gary Garrett, I think he hit 500 exactly this past week. Um, you know, what's it like? We, we've talked about him being very comfortable in that eight and nine role. He's hitting close to 300 on the season, obviously 500. I think he had about seven hits, which would be about 14 at-bats. But, you know, him being able to consistently, you know, get those hits, whether it's extra base hits or just singles, had a couple walks. He had a, a big hit-by-pitch in this series as well, depending on what side, you know, of the of the plate you're looking at. Um, but also a couple stolen bases. You know, he, he's just phenomenal out in center field as well, just covers light pole to light pole out there. Uh, if you don't mind just kind of talking about uh, about his week. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super proud of Gary. You know, Gary, you know, came in here and, you know, he had some tools, um, but he wasn't wasn't really ready to jump in there and, you know, he was a defensive replacement early in his career. He'd go out there in the eighth or ninth inning and play a, a lockdown center field or left field, depending on where we needed him. And, um, you know, offensively last year, he had his struggles. You know, he couldn't get going. And, you know, sometimes he was in and out of the lineup. And then we were like, well, we're just going to leave him out there. and We're going to have the best center fielder in the league defensively. And, um, you know, man, this year he has worked his tail off. Um, him, Coach Stanek, and Coach Buckley have just, you know, put in tons and tons and tons of time. Um, to get him where he's at, and he's super coachable. He wants to be good. He wants the team to win. He's a leader out here. Um, you know, man, he's he's been phenomenal for us this entire season, but he has really turned it on the last couple of weeks and had a phenomenal week this week. One last player. We talked to, we talked about it during the, the postgame, game two, but Oliver Zone, you know, another player that, you know, didn't exactly have a lot of playing time his freshman year, but given the chance to shine this year, he, he's really turned it on at times. A lot of speed out in left field, good contact, obviously a handful of doubles, had that big home run in game two that cleared the fence, and obviously the guys went nuts for that. But, you know, the outfield has really shined this year, not only offensively, but defensively as well. Yeah, I mean, Zone's been phenomenal. You know, he's he's a great leadoff hitter. Um, you look look at the stats, and he's got a high batting average. But, you know, he takes his walks, and he takes his HPPs. Um, you know, he's got a very, very high on base percentage. His uh, walk-to-strikeout ratio is very, very good. He sees a lot of pitches. Um, you know, like he's obviously a smaller dude, so it's kind of hard to throw him strikes sometimes, I think. And, you know, man, we, we love him in the top of the order. Um, you know, I feel like we're best when, when he's there. Um, you know, and he does a great job, like I said, of being a spark plug and getting things going. And, um, you know, man, super thankful to have him in the top of the order. Coach, obviously still one more week left to play in the regular season. You got a road trip to Anderson and then a big one with, I presume now, the number one team in the Peach Belt, USC Aiken. Pacers, who obviously two two teams are tied together, only about an hour apart, so it should be a fun stretch. Absolutely. Looking forward to a good game at Anderson on Tuesday and then getting ready for the last regular season PBC series. Stay tuned for more on the Bearcat Coaches Show. You've envisioned it before, your future. It's big and it's bold. 
Now it's time to make it happen. Our experienced faculty and friendly staff work to provide a personalized and supportive academic experience that most institutions cannot match. Lander University offers fast, flexible, and affordable online and graduate programs for those who want to launch their career path to the next level. When you launch with Lander, the world will take notice. Learn more today at www.lander.edu. The women's lacrosse team went one and one last week, defeating Young Harris on Wednesday, but falling to Flagler on Saturday. They finished second in the Gulf South Conference and now travel to Flagler to take on Alabama Huntsville in the opening round of the Gulf South Tournament. Hear from Coach DeShiel about how his team has been preparing for the postseason. Here with head women's cross coach Bob DeShiel. Coach, you guys had two weeks off, but you guys came out and didn't miss a beat. You guys dominated Young Harris last Wednesday. What did you think on your team's performance after a couple weeks off? Uh, they just had great energy, great focus, um, and right from the get-go, they took it to Young Harris, which was awesome to see. Um, just uh, in transition, we had three transition goals in the first half, which was great to see us connecting from defense down to offense. Um, and just the sideline energy and just the energy of the squad as a whole coming off that break, you never really know. Um, but it was awesome to see that they were all dialed in and, and fired up and they really got the job done. So you guys come back on Saturday, lose a tough game to Flywood, but probably one of the better games that the 11th ranked Saints have seen all season long. What did you see from your team in that game and you can take that into the Gulf South Tournament? I saw a lot of fight, um, which we knew we'd get. We, the girls were fired up, um, really focused. Uh, offensively, the ball movement was probably the best we've had all season. Um, and just the ability to finish, especially jump out to a lead, um, put seven on them in the first quarter. It was great to see us our shooting percentage was fantastic in the first half um, and just just great, great fight. Um, they went on that run in the third quarter to separate by seven, but we didn't give up and, and close strong. So um, we know we can hang with them and we know we can beat them. So we're excited to get, get that opportunity um, this upcoming weekend to, to, for some rematches. Brooke Kelly really led the offense this last week, taking, taking the range from Melissa and Emmy a little bit. What did you see from her last week to lead the offense? Uh, she just got downhill. She, we've been, she, she's a super talented player, and, and just to see her have that confidence um, to go full speed, go to cage, and, and finish, uh, it was really, really awesome to see. And so Autumn Husky just named Gulf South Defensive Player of the Week for a third time this season, booking in the year. She won, obviously, the first week, and then she wins it this week to close out the regular season. What have you seen from her? She's just been a dominant force on the defensive end. She's been a dominant force on the defensive end, at the draw circle, in the clear. Um, she just kind of does it all. Um, she's been great in between the 30s for us. Uh, really helps us establish a lot of possessions, be it through calls, turnovers, or ground balls, or draws. Um, and that's just, it's invaluable. It's huge. Um, and, so, and not to mention her, her footwork and her defensive positioning has been fantastic. So she's done, she's done a lot for us, which is awesome. So you guys head into the Gulf South Tournament this Friday with a matchup, rematch against Alabama Huntsville. You guys probably didn't play your best game against them out in Huntsville earlier this year. What do you want to see from your team changing from that first matchup heading into this one on Friday? Uh, just really just uh, settling the nerves and take care of the ball because um, a lot of it was either in transition or just kind of unforced turnovers. Uh, so we're looking forward to establishing possession, taking care of it, and we know we got finishers. Um, so it's all about just taking care of the ball, um, and and from there we know it's gonna we're, we're gonna get a good result this time. Coach, thank you very much. Hopefully, you have a long trip down to Florida this weekend. We'll be right back with the Bearcat Coaches Show right after this. If you're looking for a place to enjoy good eats and good times, look no further than Sports Break. Great food, friendly service, and a fun atmosphere have been on the menu since 1990. So bring the family by for lunch, stop in to watch a game, or enjoy a late night with friends with some cold drinks while listening to live music at Sports Break. The 11th ranked men's tennis team went 1-1 at the PBC Championship last weekend and is making their 17th straight NCAA postseason appearance. We caught with Coach Simpson as the team prepares to travel to Florida for the NCAA Regional. Here with head men's tennis coach Brett Simpson. Coach, uh, last week, Peach Belt Tournament, first round, you guys um, handled a tough Georgia College team pretty handily in the first round. Um, how did the team perform in that first round match? Georgia College were a tough team. Yeah, that was a tough match. I uh, thought we had the toughest first round, actually, of all the first rounds, just the way it worked out. Uh, yeah, we were able to, to uh, get through them, but we, we had to play well. Uh, match kind of swung on uh, number five singles there, and we were able to f finish that second set in a tie break. So 
we got the fourth point. Uh, so yeah, it was a, that was a, a solid win for us. And then um, obviously with the win, you guys advanced to face uh, Flagler, team you had just faced the week before. Uh, always tough, another heavyweight match. Uh, came down to the last point. Uh, you guys lost a heartbreaker four to three uh, to finish up the tournament. How, how did you think the team performed? Well, we're disappointed that we lost. Uh, we had our chances, I suppose. Uh, yeah, we went the distance four three. So that's twice <laughs> we've lost to them four three. Uh, we've won in some different positions. They're, they're an extremely deep team. Uh, and that's where we've struggled. Uh, to, to get the points uh, required to win. Uh, but we played again, great doubles and uh, Hugo Regnier again, beating a highly ranked guy. We just couldn't get the fourth point. So yeah, um, it was the way it turned out, disappointing, but you know, all you can do is move on. Yep, and um, <clears throat> moving on, you guys advanced to the NCAA postseason for the 17th, 17th straight season. Uh, you guys will travel down to Flagler as a third seed. You'll take on a very tough Wingate team. Uh, the SAC champions, they won the championship 20-2. Uh, and two. Obviously another tough opening round matchup for you guys. Um, looking forward to, to the Bulldogs. Um, what are you looking for from the team? Wow, yeah, Wingate's a strong team. Uh, they barely lost this season. They're actually ranked a little bit ahead of us nationally, so uh, there's some extra incentive, I suppose. Uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a really tough match. I think pretty evenly matched team. So, you know, come down to on the day, you know, who's who's who wants it more. Uh, we're gonna give it our best shot. Uh, we certainly can't look beyond them. I mean, possibly the winner will, you know, a good chance they'll play Flagler. So we would love that opportunity, but we got a tough road ahead of us to beat Wingate. But uh, we're familiar with their lineup. We see them in the fall in some tournaments. So. Guys know what to expect, and we're going to have to be on our game. All right. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us, and good luck this weekend in the postseason. We'll be back after this with more from the Bearcat Coaches Show. All right. Open since 1959, the Dixie Drive-In is home to the Dixie Cheese. A short order restaurant with a family-friendly atmosphere, the Dixie Drive-In offers comfort foods like burgers, fries, and sweet tea. Located across the street from the Jeff May Complex, at 600 Montague Avenue. Be sure to plan your post-game meal at the Dixie Drive-In. The men's cross team went 1-1 last week, losing to 13 Frank Limestone and then rolling shorter 23-3 to wrap up the regular season. The Bearcats now host the first two rounds of the PBC Championship and a bye to the semifinals. They will take on the winner of UAH and Young Harris quarterfinal match on Sunday at noon. We talked to Coach Lepore to get his thoughts on how his team is preparing for the postseason. We're here with head men's lacrosse coach Tony Lepore on the Bearcat Coaches Show. Coach, we talked about this last week. You got a share of the regular season title. Now the whole thing's yours with a, a nice win on the road against Shorter. If you don't mind just kind of going through your thoughts on, on how the game went. You were able to play some guys you normally don't play. You got all your goalies involved as well. Yeah, uh, great uh, conference road win for the team. Uh, you know, difficult week having to, of course, host Limestone here on Thursday night and then uh, hop on the road first thing Saturday morning and go out to Rome to, to play it shorter. Uh, but you're right, things really went our way. We jumped out to a nice uh, early uh, comfortable lead and were able to get uh, some of our younger guys and backups some much needed uh, game experience. Obviously, regular season's done, but the fun really begins. You host either Young Harris or Alabama Huntsville. Obviously, Young Harris, a, a scrappy team. You guys play them over at Emerald on senior day. Had a nice win there, but obviously UAH, a team that over the last couple of years since joining the Peach Belt, and I think you guys might have played them once when you were a part of the GLVC, a team that has played you very tight. You know, depending on how that quarterfinal matchup goes on the 28th, you know, you're looking at two different different styles of play. That's right. Um, you know, obviously we're going to prepare for both. You know, we're going to spend this week focusing on ourselves. Um, and also, you know, given the fact that exams start this week and there's the boys have a lot going on. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're really excited to play either one of them. Uh, they're both, you know, worthy opponents. And, you know, we know it's going to be a tough game. And uh, any time that you have to beat a team twice in the same season, that is uh, presents a real challenge. You know, so we're going to we're getting to work on them both today and uh, we'll see what happens on Friday night. Obviously, the other side of the bracket doesn't get much easier. Flagler hosting the other side of the quarterfinals. They'll take the winner of Montevallo and Shorter. Obviously, we're probably expecting Montevallo 
to win, so that should be a really good matchup. Montevallo, a team that's won the conference title the last couple, been in contention for the conference title the last couple of years, and Flagler, who's put together a really good season in conference. I think they went six and nine out of conference, but they played you guys very tough down at St. Augustine. So if it was, you know, push came to shove, and it's you and Flagler, obviously up here, she's on the other foot. They have to drive six hours, possibly. That's right. Um, you know, and I think that's why uh, you know locking up the regular season conference championship is so valuable because you get to host um, sleep in your own bed you know and um, stick to your normal schedule as much as you possibly can um, and so that's obviously you know a nice uh, it's definitely a positive and then of course um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a close eye on those games down in St. Augustine this, uh, this weekend. And, um, you know, I anticipate uh, a real competitive matchup, um, you know, on, on Sunday. Just kind of rolling things back to the shorter game. It seemed like the starters maybe played about uh, the, the first quarter a little bit more. Who are some of, who are some of the, the younger guys, some of the backups that really impressed you with the, with the playing time that they were able to get? You know, a conference game against shorter. You can't really take anyone too lightly, even though it's, you know, this late in the season. Um, well, there was a few freshmen that I thought uh, they've been doing really well in practice, and you know they we've been using them in games a little bit more, and they really they really did well on Saturday. Um, you know, Michael Mataliano had his first couple of goals. Uh, Logan Dorcas at the faceoff, you know, he he did really well, and actually he scored off the off the draw as well. Um, Aiden Corrigan gave us some great minutes on defense. Uh, Tyler Weiss at the long stick midfield position. There's a lot of the young guys who um, been working really hard in practice, steadily improving, and uh, when we put them in, um, you know, what you like to see is just it, it looks the same. Like the, the systems, the defensively, offensively, you know, ride clear all generally looks the same, um, you know, if with the, with the backups in the reserves, and it did. So that's one of the things that we were really pleased with uh, because sometimes, especially early in the year, you put the freshmen and the backups in, things get a little squirrely out there, um, but they're not freshmen anymore. You know, they've got, you know, what do we have, 15 games under our belt, you know, a fall ball and a full season of practice. So the freshmen don't really look like freshmen anymore, and it showed on Saturday. Well, thank you very much, Coach. Obviously a busy week here at the Van Taylor Stadium. Full of lacrosse on April 28th. You'll have the quarterfinal matchup, and then the one that you're going to want to keep your eye out for is April 30th, Lander taking on the winner of Young Harris and UAH. Stay tuned for more on the Lander Bearcat Coaches Show. Break on the Lake offers a menu loaded with a wide range of delicious seafood and steaks, along with amazing selection of handcrafted cocktails. From appetizers to soups and salads, Break on the Lake's food is served with a Intimate space perfect for a cozy meal with family or a quiet date night. Whatever you're here for, you can always count on Break on the Lake for fresh seafood and a warm welcome from their team. Thanks to Sports Break and Break on the Lake, proud sponsors of Bearcat Athletics. The softball team lost 2-3 to three to number 2 North Georgia to wrap up the regular season. The Bearcats will be the fourth seed in the Peach Belt Conference Championship and will take on Flagler in the quarterfinals Friday in Columbus, Georgia. We sat down with Coach Crawford to talk about his final series of the regular season and the upcoming PVC championship. I'm here with head coach, uh, softball team, Glenn Crawford. Coach, uh, wrapped up the regular season this past weekend, lost two out of three to the number two team in the nation, uh, North Georgia. Uh, but one of those uh, games was a three nothing win. Uh, Cam Atkins, uh, complete game shutout, her first of her career. Uh, it was also the first time Bearcats have beat North Georgia in 15 years. Yeah. Uh, stopped a 35-game losing streak. How did you feel about the team uh, in the last weekend of the season? Well, I, I would go back to the, the honestly the last three weekends is that we started playing very, very well. It started down in Flagler. We started our pitching, started getting around. Cam started coming on. Um, fast forward, we go to uh, Georgia Southwestern, played a good series there against a good team. Once again, pitching was really good, hitting was good. Uh, last weekend with North Georgia, we go in. And I, honestly, I thought we played well the whole weekend. First three innings of the, of the first game, we didn't play defense as well as we should have and gave up some runs and put us behind. Um, the 3-0 game, uh, uh, second game of, the, of Saturday, uh, Cam pitched lights out, uh, you know, four hits, uh, three strikeouts. But we played really good defense behind her. And that's, and that's the key is, is when we hit on all phases, we're a really good, strong team. And that's why I try to tell our girls going in, is like, look, yeah, they're North Georgia. Yeah, they're a very good team, but we can play with them and we can beat them. And so, uh, so uh, we, we we did. And then on Sunday, once again, we played great defense. We just didn't get timely hitting, and that's where you know North Georgia had timely hits with runners in scoring position, and we didn't. And that's the tell of the game. 
And so now that the regular season's wrapped up, uh, get ready for the Peach Belt uh, Championship starting this weekend. Yeah. Uh, still a few games left to play, so you're not sure who you'll play in yeah. the first round, but you've locked yeah. up the four seed. Yeah. Uh, we'll be traveling to Columbus State uh, uh, since they're the top seed. Mm -hmm. um, but what's your message to the team as you get ready for the um, Peach Belt Championship? Well, it's, it's a brand new season. Everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. So, you know, uh, we go play, keep doing what we're doing. The team that gets hot at the right time can win the whole thing. And, and that's us. And, uh, and once again, if we, if we keep going in that right direction, I think we could be that team. We have, we have the pitching, we have the hitting, we have the defense, and we run bases really well. So if we can put all those together uh, for two days, then we'll get to play the following weekend. Well, Coach, good luck, and we'll be cheering you on this weekend. We'll be back after this with more from the Bearcat Coaches Show. Welcome to Hamilton Park Apartments, your destination for luxury living in Greenwood. We feature studio, one, and two bedroom apartments. First class amenities. We'll see you soon. That's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us. Join us next week to get caught up on everything happening in Lander Athletics.